Hello everybody and welcome back to Gardens and Crystals with me, Wesley Peterson. And today I have another one of those update videos for you. This time I have this beautiful plant next to me here. This is my Epipremnum pinatum. And I have had this plant for over a year now and it is doing fantastically for me, I think. <laughs> I bought this as a little plant in a pot and you know what, I can't even remember if I did a Raid in the Rack video on it um, and well, it was a little plant, just kind of like this little piece down here and it had the immature leaves on it, long thin leaves and it had no uh, slits in the leaves whatsoever and the plant was actually sold to me as an Epipremnum pinatum Cebu Blue and that was going on around that time. The Cebu Blues became very popular. Everybody wanted them. And well, I've heard that they were easy to get hold of in the United States, for example. But in Europe, a year ago, it wasn't easy to get them. And when they came in, they were actually marked as Cebu Blue. So I bought this thinking I had a Cebu Blue at that time and that it would mature and become more blue but my plant stayed green and I found out it was an Epipremnum pinatum. And well, that didn't make any difference to me because this plant is absolutely gorgeous, very interesting. And to this day, I have still not seen an Epipremnum pinatum Cebu blue. So if anyone in Sweden around the Malmö area or anything like that knows of where I could get myself one, please let me know in the comments below. <laughs> But this beautiful plant here, well, in a year, I've actually had it growing up and around the totem, and I've been fastening it to the totem, around the other side and down again and up, because otherwise this plant would actually already be around two, three meters tall. But then I would have long, thin vines with probably not so many leaves around this area and lots of big leaves starting to grow at the top. And I really didn't want that kind of look. So I've been wrapping it around, up and down, not around in any way, so that it's getting constricted, up and down so that each vine is free. And now I've got this beautiful cascade of leaves at the front, because this is actually standing in my kitchen against a wall, so all the leaves are facing towards the window. On the one side, on the back, there isn't as many leaves. But what I love about it is that you can get to see the maturity of the leaves, the different type of leaves that come along on this plant. So as I said, the small ones, long and thin and beautiful, and then they start getting fenestrations, one, and then there's some that have two, there's some that have four, and the leaves are getting longer and bigger, and it's just amazing to watch. This is in just one year. The plant, I mean it, when I got it, it was just like a normal little plant. <laughs> so I'm so excited about this. and. Well, just so that you can get to see the leaves much better, I want to take you in for a closer look before I carry on about all the care tips and things that I've learned about this plant within a year. So let's have that closer look. So as you can see here at the bottom, you can see all the more immature leaves that don't have any slits in them. Long and thin and shiny and gorgeous. And then as we go up, you can see here some of the leaves that start to get slits in. This leaf here has four, the one below had three, and they're just absolutely gorgeous. They're getting bigger and bigger, and I'm really wondering if they're going to flush out huge leaves this year, because every one that comes out from now on seems to be getting more and more of these slits in them. But I love that you can see on one plant the contrast and the whole process in one plant. So imagine if I let this plant grow up onto a tall totem, it would just grow out and get lovely big leaves all the way up. Um, and I've decided, as I said, to just keep it on this smaller totem where I've been folding the vine up and down but this plant has been very easy and very thankful and happy 
in my kitchen where it gets a slight amount of direct light and the rest is kind of shady. So, I really hope you liked seeing this plant closer up and you got to see the different slits and the different shapes of leaves and what's going on. It's absolutely fantastic. Now, at that time when I bought this plant, I didn't have terracotta pots, I didn't have pots around me that had holes in that weren't just plastic pots. So I decided to plant this plant directly in this ceramic cash pole. No holes in the bottom and well, I did all the things that you shouldn't actually do. Put it in a gigantic pot when it was in a small pot to start with, or I probably had two plants or so. I can see two stems at least. Um, put them in the pot, lots of soil, no drainage holes, and well, in a whole year, it hasn't affected my plant at all. I haven't overwatered it. It's actually been left to dry out quite a bit when I haven't been here and so forth, but when I water it, I dump water all over the area. I make sure I stay close to the stem because I know there's a lot of soil and I don't want this plant getting bogged down and rotting out because it's a plant that doesn't need too much water. It likes to dry out in between. And it seems to be doing fine. I have it in a soil that is a gardening mix and it's mixed with perlite and uh, bark and um, I think it's got lecker balls and uh, a little bit of biochar I put around the top later, I added that. And so the plant is happy with the soil obviously, it's happy with its pot obviously and it's happy with its stake and it's growing out. It's very green, the window it kind of faces towards is an east facing window and during the morning time there is some direct light that shines onto the plant for a very short period and then it's bright indirect light most of the day. And this plant is really loving that because it doesn't want to be in direct scorching hot sun. That will burn out these thin leaves. They're very thin. Um, but it's obviously been enough to help this plant want to mature out and look the way it is. I mean, it really has transformed so much from when I bought it. It's unbelievable. It's so nice with some of these plants that you buy them and they turn into a completely different type of plant. We know that from a few different species of plants that do that. This plant, I would say, um, it's been on its own most of the time, but it's still managed to get thrips somehow. So I have a few brown patches on the leaves, a scarring that happens when you get thrips. But I've been spraying this plant over with neem oil and a dishwashing uh, liquid solution together, spraying this plant, and it seems like this plant is clear of thrips because it's not usually here in my indoor garden. This is where all the insect action happens because I have a lot more plants closer to each other, which is not a recommendation, but something that we love because we love the beauty of it. So I've been selecting out plants as I go along on my journey, learning about house plants, um, which plants are okay being close together, which plants are less prone to lots of insects and so forth and filtering out. So for example, I no longer have any kind of Gopertia, Calatheas, and I don't have many Syngoniums. I have my Trileaf Wonder, but I don't have many others. Um, and things like that that get a lot of insects. But they're beautiful plants, I love them, and I most definitely probably will with time, you know, get myself something or other, one or two, and have them somewhere where I can have them alone, not grouped together with the other plants. Anyway, now I've gone off track completely here. This is supposed to be about my Epipremnum pinnatum, right? I think last summer season, I fertilized all my plants and a lot of my plants actually got burn marks on them because they were over fertilized. So I've really dialed back on fertilizing. I've fertilized a much smaller amount than it says on the label. I use a liquid organic fertilizer now. I don't use these slow releasing pellets and things on my plants because I found that those stress out my plants. Um, because the light is not bright enough and they're not getting the natural environment and the wind and the rain and everything else to combine and flush out if there's too much fertilizer. So that is just a suggestion to be very careful with the fertilizer, especially with this plant with thin leaves. It can get burning patches on it. This plant, it's just been doing its thing. I mean, it just wants to reach up to the sky and grow out. This plant is an easy plant to care for. This is not one of those difficult plants. As I said, it's in a pot with no drainage holes or huge pot 
I mean, this plant is not using even a quarter of the amount of soil in this pot, even after a year. If I should take it up, the root ball is probably still tiny, but you know, it's happy. And what I did when the uh, vine came down this time, this little piece at the front, I don't know if you can see it, but I can't pick up this plant and show it to you because it's too heavy. I actually put that down into the soil and covered it and left that to root out and become a new stem so that I can put that up into the top. So every time one of these vines come down now to the bottom, I will actually stick that into the soil, let it root out and become a separate vine of its own so that I can keep getting more growing up and up a clone of itself constantly going on. So all I've been doing is spraying it over, giving it neem oil, just keeping a good eye on it. It doesn't brown out very much on the tips and so forth, but I see a little bit, but I think that's happened mostly because it's got bugs at some point. But most of the times these leaves stay lovely all the way around, all the way down to the tip and they don't brown out so much. This plant, if you overwater it, it's going to mush out and brown out because it'll get the rot. But if you leave it too long, yes, the leaves are thin and they will start browning out around the edges. But going back to when you go out and buy this plant, um, one thing I really do want to point out in this video is that it's still possible that there are Epipremnum pinnatums that are being labelled as Cebu Blue accidentally or because certain people might be wanting to sell the plant to you as the Cebu Blue, which has been much more popular than the green variety. But I would suggest you get yourself one of each because the green variety is beautiful and the blue variety. And these leaves are only just starting to mature. When they get bigger, when they mature, they can get really big and they can get a lot of slits. They look absolutely gorgeous. But to get a plant like that, it's going to have to be allowed to grow up and it's going to have to have the correct amount of light and humidity and warmth and everything else. This plant is a plant that likes to be kept at a good room temperature and it's in my kitchen so it's in normal indoor humidity so it's probably around 40 percent or so there um absolutely fine with that a little spray off now and again just to keep the leaves clean and that's it i mean the plant and the pot is too big for me to go and shower it off but if you have a smaller plant i would suggest you take that into the shower hose it over and you know, let that drip off and then you'll be sure that you've got a lot of dust and any kind of insects that could be on the leaves away. So yeah, just go out and enjoy this beautiful plant. So don't go out and think, oh, there's just a little uh, Epipremnum pinnatum. That's not gonna grow into very much and it probably won't change. Yes, it will. In a year, you're gonna have something like this. And I'm wondering what it's going to be like in another year, if the leaves are going to get even bigger and if they will start getting more and more slits later on. That is just so exciting for me. So yeah, I just wanted to show this off because I haven't spoken about this plant. You haven't seen this plant since I bought it a year ago and it's doing fabulously. Really, really gorgeous. I have a little crystal down in the bottom here. I have a little Buddha figure. And yeah, I was thinking of going in and repotting this plant into a terracotta pot because I've been doing that with a lot of my other plants you know when I've repotted them I've been putting them into terracotta so that I can water them and not worry that I'm going to be overwatering them too much or anything like that um, and that the water can drain out of the bottom and all of these things but I do have periods where I'm in my cottage and then my plants might be here for a week or two and then in terracotta they're not getting enough water so when I come back they're really really dehydrated so it's a difficult balancing act um, when you use terracotta because they do need to be watered more. But if I have plants that are in pots like this and I ask someone to water my plants, to look after my plants that maybe don't know that much about them, there's a huge risk that my plants are going to rot out because they will be overwatered. <laughs> so I would prefer to err on the drier side of things than the wet side because the drier side, at least you can water and you know, revive your plant. But if your plant's got too wet and it's too far gone with the root rot, then you're not going to be able to save that plant that it is. But you know a vine, you would always be able to go in regardless of root rot and prune back every segment of the stem that has nodes and you can propagate them in any which way you want to. Water, uh, lecker balls, soil, um, and you could even use uh, perlite or whatever. And you can start to grow out your plant again Time and patience is your best friend, but usually when you do propagations on plants like this, 
It doesn't take more than a couple of weeks before they've got root and you will probably be replanting your propagations after a month. So it's not that much time you need to wait. But then after you've replanted, then you need to be careful and then it will take time for the plant to grow up like this again. And it will take time for a plant like this to grow out leaves that start maturing again. Because when you take propagations and put the cuttings in soil and so forth, they usually start off with their immature leaves again for a while before they build up the momentum to produce bigger leaves with slick fenestrations and so forth. But it's such an interesting process to be able to see the transformation of a plant like this. And that's why I suggest this plant specifically for that, if you like to see the transformation, because this one's really, really turned into something else. So that's all I wanted to say, really. This was another quick video about another one of my plants, another update to show that they are doing well. And if you have any questions about this plant, write them below. If you have an Epipremnum pinatum and you want to um, tell a story about your plant or how your plant looks and so forth, then please do that as well. It'd be so interesting to hear how yours has transformed into a more mature plant. So all I have to say now is Thank you very much once again for watching Gardens and Crystals with me, Wesley Peterson. Please remember to like, subscribe and hit the bell so you know when my next video will be coming up. And I will see you again very, very soon. Goodbye.